Good morning and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome in to Course Ace 2024 Closed. We've got a very exciting matchup here for you today. It's going to be an upper bracket match between none other than the number one seed in Malashevsky going up against Enri, who's uh, been crushing his way through this tournament so far, hoping to uh, step up here against the big dogs the ones known as Malashevsky, and to see what he can do in this matchup, see if maybe he can pull out an underdog performance or possibly even a win, which would be quite the feat. I'm Mavs, and uh, joining me here today is going to be none other than Vordy yet again. How you doing, man? I'm doing great. Thank you, Mavs. I am so, so excited for this matchup. I think out of all of the matches that were set for this weekend, this is the one I've been anticipating the most just because of how dominant these two have been on their respective sections of the winner's bracket. In qualifiers, Malashevsky had quite a big lead over everybody else, but so far in the round of 16, in the quarterfinals, both of these players have been right up there, averaging 700k uh, in all of their lobbies, um, just doing so, so well. Malashevsky just with a slight edge, but Enri so close. And you did mention that Enri, likely the underdog here, just because of the tenure of Malashevsky, because of his long uh, history of wins. But at the same time, I don't think it's a big underdog. I think it's like a 60-40. I think this is going to be super close. And I'm just so, ex so excited to see this, this game being played at such a high level. Yeah, no, absolutely. I would agree. Definitely, I think almost anybody, I think, aside from Emrek, would just come into a match against Malashevsky and be the underdog. And I think that's just how it's been for a very long time and how... Well, I guess we'll find out if, if it will continue to be that way. Of course, Enri, the way he's been performing, we saw that last week, that match against Flying Tuna that we had the pleasure of casting. Enri was just putting up ridiculous scores and he's just been playing super, super well. But of course, Malice, no slouch ever. Yeah, I mean, he's always playing well. When's the last time this guy had a bad tournament match? Like, I can't, I yeah. can't even remember. So uh, we'll have to see. I think it's a lot of this is going to come down to these first couple picks, of course. They're going to be very, very important those first four picks before you get into those second stage of bands, you really don't want to be losing a break point there. That's that's when you're getting into a really scary territory. So see if these players can hopefully come out of the gate swinging with a, a couple confident picks. And if we can see 2-2, two, two, maybe at the second band point, I think we'll probably be in for a pretty good match. Yeah, for sure. In a match this contested where both of these players can play everything, like unironically, both of these players are good at every skill set this game has to offer, just at varying levels of comfort. Um, you know, maybe Enri likely has the advantage on that speed. Malashevsky likely has that advantage on tech. Not to say that both of these players, both of these players can play those skill sets. We're just talking about at the very margins what these players are more com most comfortable on. I would say maybe Malashevsky also wants to pick into some raw aim, as he did really well on that in qualifiers, but at the same time lost the head-to-head -head on the Nomad 1 in the quarterfinals. Uh, so yeah, I mean, as you said, you really want to win your first two picks here before the second set of bands, just because any pick that you make is going to be hard fought. Uh, and it's going to come, you know, be the case for both of these players. And I think even just the bands are going to be a, a tough thing to decide on. Yeah, I'm kind of unsure what we may end up seeing here in terms of bands. Of course, because you were saying, right, both of these players, they're so proficient in so many skill sets that it's kind of hard to really guess what might be banned out. I think if I would have if I had to make a guess, I do think the smartest band for Malashevsky would be something in that tapping territory, possibly that DT2 or that Nomad 5. I think probably the DT2 would be the more likely ban, but it doesn't mean he can't win it. As, as we said before, he can still win on something like that. And for Enri, again, like, I don't really know. Do you just ban out some tech? Do you just take that ridiculously hard no mod 4 out with those cross map like, high-velocity yeah, sliders yeah. against Malashevsky, even though Enri's possibly, like, top three players in this tournament on a map like that? You know, do you still just take that out against arguably the number one player in the tournament on a map like that? You know, you just... It's going to be really, really... Uh, Really difficult, I think, to make some good bands here. I think definitely for Malashevsky, a little more straightforward. I think you go for that tapping, but we'll have to see what they're going to opt for. Yeah, I mean, this is a matchup where both players are expected to play so well that if you're not confident, if you're Enri, you're not confident on FCing the Nomad 4, even if you're confident on like, getting 500, 600k, and that's, that would be enough to win against almost any other player, against Malashevsky, who might get 700, 800, even an FC, might not be enough. And same case for Malashevsky, you might you might even be able to FC the Nomad 5, but Enri like gets 99% and you lose. So, uh, and FC is it well. So yeah, it's going to be tough. Uh, I think we're still probably waiting on the players uh, to be ready, but 
I think, as you mentioned, likely to expect a speed ban from Malashevsky just off the fact that Enri can act it like an absolute monster, and Enri probably bans a tech map uh, from Malashevsky just because he's that comfortable on getting ridiculous scores on tech maps. Yeah, I think there's a something worth mentioning with the pool this week is, at least when I was watching through the pool, I definitely did notice quite a lot of... Uh, reading tied into quite a few of these maps not necessarily that they are like pure reading maps but just a lot of these different maps especially the alt maps have elements of reading in them you've got that nomad 3 which it's only ar 9.3 but <laughs> when you watch the map it's so dense it just looks so hard to read just because of how many notes there are at once even at that ar 9.3 so that that nomad 3 got high elements of reading that hidden 3 also sort of your ulti sort of techie slot has also got quite a decent amount of reading in it with some overlaps and weird patterns and kick sliders and as well as that hard rock three which is like your it's like more of a ulti type hard rock three if i'm remembering correctly which also has elements of reading so definitely a bit of reading spread out across this pool i think both players should fare of course pretty well on it and i don't really i don't really know who i favor when it comes to reading in general between these two players i think it's probably just very map dependent I think maybe on something like the Nomad 6, I could actually maybe swing a little bit into Enri's favor. But on something like the Nomad 3, I'd probably favor Malashevsky. So I guess we'll just have to wait and see what they're gonna what they're gonna opt for there. But I think that's something worth mentioning. Is just there's a decent amount of reading and like control in general in this pool. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of control in this pool, and there's a lot of matchups where if it was Malashevsky versus somebody else, Enri versus somebody else, you just give the control maps to them because they're both such good control players. But in a 1v1, it's like, man, it really feels coin flippy a lot of the time, because they're both going to be so good at it. Nomad 3 as well, I think, feels like one of the hardest maps in the pool. There's a lot of uh, aim control maps in the pool here that just don't feel realistically FCable, just for how many insane patterns are in them. Like, the hit, the end of Hidden 3 is pretty absurd. Um, Nomad 3 in general is just really insane. We've seen quite a few really good players uh, drop like 300k on it so far. Um, Hard Rock 3 as well, pretty difficult to be consistent on, so I can imagine 100% one of these players is going to go into one of those maps at some point, and it really might just come down to who's feeling better because we know both of these players are such good aim control uh, players. Yeah, absolutely. And here we go, finally getting into the bands hit, and it is going to be that DT1 going out from Malashevsky, which, as we were mentioning, probably going to take out something in that tapping department, it wasn't the Nomad 5 or DT2 though, it was that DT1, which to be fair, does have quite a lot of tapping elements in it. So definitely makes sense uh, for Malice to take that one out. We actually saw MREC yesterday almost set the Tawny PP record on that DT1. So unfortunate to see it go out this match. Yeah, pretty unfortunate, but makes sense as well. The DT2 actually is a little bit lower BPM, more finger control centered than the dt1 was more, more so aim but we did see Henry get number one on qualities on the dt1 super comfortable at that high ar dt aim so completely understandable ban and the hard rock 3 is an interesting ban from Henry. i'm surprised to see the hard rock 3 taken out instead of something like the nomad 4 but obviously does go for the nomad 5 right out the gate the speed map um now this map although it does have several really long 259 bpm streams there's also a good amount of aim in it at a pretty high bpm so Definitely not just speed. You have to have your aim on point to make sure you don't drop. Yeah, kind of like your consistency-based uh, Nomad pick, but it's just got quite a lot of tapping in it as well, especially at, I believe it's like 260 BPM, and some of the bursts get pretty long, so if you're not warmed up for tapping, warmed up for speed, you're definitely going to find some act drops and some struggles on those longer bursts. But here we go, getting into the first pick of the match. It's going to be the Nomad 5 pick from Henry. And I'm gonna be interested to see how Malashevsky fares on the longer streams. Both of these players are known for having really good accuracy in these matches, even when they break. But on speed, Henry is known as the Ack Goat. And we'll see if Malis already finding a few 100s towards the end of that first stream. See how he recovers. But if there's any matchup where you could envision a double FC that ends on an Ack battle, it's this one. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Malice is just always known as that one guy who gets the best accuracy, but Enri as well is insane ack. And as you can see here in the tapping department, Enri definitely has the more confident accuracy. Malice finding a way somehow in some way to combo through that whole section. But it doesn't matter when Enri has a 7% accuracy advantage right now, moving into the last third of the map. He just needs to hold on this combo for a little bit longer and he'll probably do enough to secure his first pick here. And boy, is it really important that he gets the first pick. More long bursts coming in. How is Malice hitting oh, all of these man. with all these 100s? 87%, but he holds the combo. I think Enri might have just done enough. He needs to hold on. That uh, that score lead could flip pretty fast if Enri misses. Only an eighth of the map to go. Very short map, but already such a huge act advantage. Malice right behind. I think we saw a similar case with Emrek F. Singh getting like 800k overall with a relatively lock as well, but I think Enri about to get it. Malice does drop at the end, and it's going to be oh. Enri to find the 97% full combo on his first pick. A fantastic way to start the match. Yeah, there it is, man. Hitting that last pattern of the map, which, I mean, dare I say, that's like one of the hardest bits. Just like the aim into those quints there is really, really tough. Getting through it, getting the FC. And I mean, Malice put up one heck of a performance. 700k, 89% to miss. Gets the B rank in the end of it, but... I mean, it was a winnable point for him, you know? Enri finds an unfortunate miss somewhere halfway through the map, maybe another slider break. That's that's winnable for Malice, but... Enri, cool, calm, collected. Seals the first pick, gets the first point on the board, and with that, I mean, Enri's got some good information now as well. He knows that DT2 is probably going to be a solid pick coming up. Yeah, 100%. I think if you're Enri going into your second pick, you just have to go DT2. Otherwise, you don't really have any high BPM left. And we know Malachevsky is fantastic on Floem. He's going to be able to tap the Nomad 2 just fine. And he's so good at those C-Mob C type maps. Um, I don't really think that's going to be a huge advantage pick for Enri. So DT2 for sure, I think, here after Malice's pick. But but as Malachevsky pick, I think Nomad 4 is a fair option. If you want to go for other aim control maps, you have Nomad 3. You have Hidden 3, considering the Hard Rock 3 was banned. But a lot of those are going to be contested. Like the Nomad 5, though, you know. if As you mentioned, if Enri missed, it would have been over. But Enri just not altering at all yeah I, I do wonder what malice goes for i mean it's got to be something on the techie side i'm expecting like a nomad 4 possibly a nomad 3 possibly a hidden 3 maybe something like that it is interesting to see both these players leave up that nomad 6 like uh, you know it always is interesting to see these matchups where the nomad 6 just historically this tournament have been ridiculously hard yeah <laughs> and uh Leaving that up is definitely saying, you know, to your opponent, hey, I can play this map. I've practiced the hell out of it. Otherwise, there's no way I'd be leaving it up. So go ahead and pick it. But you're almost just taunting them to pick it. So curious if uh, Malice will opt to go for that at some point in this match. But no, he is going to go the Hard Rock 2, which is your aim consistency with small circles. This is an interesting pick. Now, I do believe... I could be wrong, but I don't know if Enri enjoys small circle size that much. I vaguely recall in uh, MGC, Enri batting out the skills for not being as comfortable with it. Um, we'll see if that still ends up being the case, but this is a brutal small circle map. We're going to see Enri already find a drop, uh, but this one is not 6.5. It is 7.8, and I cannot understate how much harder that makes it. Yeah, I mean, just you look at some of these linear jumps, snapping these is just a skill in its own. I mean, these jumps right here are just unbelievably hard to be consistent on. But both these players hitting all of them, Enri finding the third miss of the map, misses again. Malice just going oh. strong, finally finds the break, was SSing, but can you blame him? I think you're expected to break at some point in this map. Look at these linears, man. It's just impossible to combo, but he's got a huge advantage moving into the second half, and... I mean, he's going to have to absolutely collapse, I think, for Enri to make any sort of comeback here. Yeah, I think at this point, already halfway through the map, other than just getting consecutive Brutal Chain misses on those streams, I can't imagine dropping your score low enough, especially when he's holding through. And the ag, ag advantage is pretty big as well. I do think this is one of those skill sets that is deceptively annoying to act. I don't know what exactly it is about small circles, but it's harder to act than, than big circles, for sure. Uh, but Malachevsky not faced by that at all. And yeah, it seems to be getting a really solid score. I believe this is the best Hard Rock 2 score of the weekend thus far. We've seen this pick a few times. Yeah, I mean, I absolutely wouldn't be surprised if it was. This is uh, that type of map where it's just like your classic like 300k map. 
you know, in a tourney match. Like something like Enry score is what you expect from players of this caliber when they come into a tourney and they play a CS 7.8 map like this. You're not expecting to get insane scores on it, but Malice, I mean, man, just almost gets a 600k. I, I can't understate how brutal those linear jumps are. Just completely unhittable for 99% yeah. of players in any stretch of the imagination. And it's just, yeah, ridiculous score from Malice. And actually both getting the eight miss. I think Malice finding like a huge string of misses somewhere in that middle portion. But yeah, just incredible stuff there from Malice. Taking the first pick confidently, firing right back at Henry. And now Henry to convert, hopefully, his second point and uh, possibly bring things up to a 2-2 at that second band point, which is uh, what you, what you want to see if you're hoping for a close match. Yeah, for sure. And I think Malice just spotting, noticing oh, the... 300. Oh yeah, no, noticing the uh, precision discomfort uh, that Henry has. Obviously, he's still getting 300k, which is a really solid score, but Malashevsky getting 500k, quite difficult to beat. But I do, as we mentioned before, just expect to see the DT2 picked here before it gets banned in the second phase. Uh, could have something else up his sleeve, but DT2 is, I think, very close to something like a mix between a DT1 and a finger control map anyway. Has a good amount of aim consistency. It is C a CS5, though which is important to consider. It's noticeably smaller circle than your average DT2. And considering Enry might not be as comfortable at the precision, that could make a difference as to how excited he is to play that map. Yeah, no, for sure. But he is going to go yeah. for it. Missed to kill myself, DC2 here. Coming out. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, I didn't even take note of it, like, during that Hard Rock 2, but... It, that accuracy from Malice was unbelievable. It was it three one hundreds, especially yeah. compared to Henry's twenty eight one hundreds, was cracked from Malice. You <laughs> the accuracy, them. that's just nuts. But yeah, the DT two coming out. I think that's what you expected. I don't know what else you uh could go for at this point in the match. You you win that no mod five very confidently. I think this is pretty much your only pick that makes sense. So yeah, it's gonna be going for it. DT two. Oh. Very long one. This is a 4 minute 30 seconds map after double time and uh, just very consistent. I think it does spike towards the end with some longer finger control sections, but for the most part it's just what you see here. A little bit of aim consistency, but lots of 255 BPM finger control and some more space bursts towards the end. Yeah, this map's just unrelenting too. I mean, you don't get a chance to breathe. Like, even just looking at the start of this map, man, like, when do you just get a chance to just <laughs> do anything? But it's just constant shred and so much finger control. You just need so much focus on a map like this, especially with how long this is with DT. I mean, I know, is that 4 minutes 30 with DT? Or well, it's, it's after, it's after. I, th I think this is like a 7 minute map before DT. This is yeah, very long. yeah, okay. There you go. Even if it wasn't, 3 minutes of this would still be long. But I mean, 4 and a half minutes of this is just ridiculous. You can see both players now handling it very, very well. A 1% act lead for Enry, though. He's going to hold on to that lead early on into this map. Only a quarter of the way through, though. A lot of room for things to still happen. Both players getting through. Oh, there you go. Do you think that was it? You think that was the first section done? You get a chance to breathe? Nope. Nope, we just keep going. <laughs> no, uh, I, I recall this map having a break somewhere, but we you don't get that so. break just yet. <laughs> yeah, we hope so for these players, but... I mean, so far, not a huge act lead for Enry. It's not as polarizing as it was on the Nomad 5. Just a very small lead, but that just likely won't matter that much. I cannot imagine both of these players FCing this map just because of how long it is and how many opportunities they are to break, especially the ending. Oh, man. And here we go, getting into a little bit more aimy section here. Some of these bursts getting a little more space, having some angles thrown in there as well as a bit more finger control with these doubles, but both players handling it valiantly. Both on the 1300 combo FCs right now. Accolade's Ac still there for Enry. It's about half a percent. But this could go at any moment. You're just expecting a miss from someone. Someone has to break at some point as they both approach the halfway point of the map, holding onto the FCs. And here's the break. I think possibly there we go. about Morty. Oh man. I wonder if either of them are tapping right now. God. <laughs> yeah. You would hope not, but. This will be a nice respite for them to get their finger stamina back before we get into the ending section. So far, there's not many problems, both looking pretty comfortable. This would be unreal to see a double FC on a map like this. 
third on a four of the map yeah. remaining, man. This would be unreal on a four and a half minute map of this. They're both just still going strong. 1770 combo and climbing. The Ack lead's still there for Enry. It's it's shrinking though, it's about 0.3% now. Both still hitting everything. Oh, what man. is this performance from these players? This is the upper bracket semi-final you expect from two of the best players in the world. 2,000 combo, a quarter of the map remaining. They're still just FC. How are they hitting all of this? Oh, Enry drops. finally misses. Malashevsky chain misses though as well. There's room. It's a 5k lead for Malice. There's still room for Enry here. This ending is just unhittable, but we still got about a quarter of the map remaining, boy. It's gonna come down to whoever can hold their accuracy and find the fewest chain misses right oh now. My God. Because of that, Mr. Malice has now gone back to Enry, but that could change at any moment. Enry holding on 300 combo now at this ending section. It only goes on for just a short map longer, but I think that's it. I think that's it. I think the rest of the map is just really chill. Enry should have been able to secure that, yeah. I think that oh miss on God. the end from Malice made the difference. And it ended up being that 1% act lead or 0.8% act lead that secures the win uh, for Enry, but unbelievably close and extremely well done. Both players getting 800k. Phenomenal. Yeah, unreal. Malice is going to, like, he's going to be stunlocked, just perma CC'd when he sees the score and sees he lost that. Because that's <laughs> unreal. I cannot believe both players FC'd till that unhittable ending, by the way. And, I mean, Enry was the one to break first, but just getting through that ending more comfortably. 30 less max combo, but just far more comfortable on that impossible ending. And manages to secure the win two miss from Henry man up against the nine from malice but to be fair i think for malice there, a large chunk of those misses were like on one pattern yeah. you just like hard chain missed it but still just ridiculous stuff from both of these players and two one now for Henry and you're expecting malice of all players to probably secure a two two here which is what we wanted going into the second half of the match Yep, if you want a close match, if you want a tiebreaker like I, I do, and I think Mavs likely does as well, just yeah. uh, e following the script, each player wins all of their picks until you get the tiebreaker. I do not mind that one bit. But Malice to pick. I mean, if you want to stay in the hard rock aim lane, you don't really have much to go to. There's hard rock one, but that's a completely different type of hard rock than your generic hard rock aim, but does go for the Nomad 3 does lean into the aim control, and this map is quite a brutal example of one. Maz mentioned this earlier, this is AR 9.3, which isn't that low, but for a map this dense, makes a huge difference on the comfort. I think we've seen several players play this so far and uh, not get the greatest of scores and finding quite a few misses just because of how challenging this one is. Yeah, I think I'd agree with what you said earlier. I think this is probably one of the hardest maps in the pool, although, you know, these maps are starting to get out of the range of uh, what I can comprehend in terms of the skill level. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is this map just looks unrelenting, like, man. You see these patterns already. You're, you're looking at this map, and at least when I first looked at it, I'm like, oh man, this is like AR 8.9, you know? <laughs> and then you look at it, you're like, wait, it's 9.3. Oh, yeah, I guess it's just that dense. It's just that many notes. So early on, Henry finding some struggles which you can't really blame him but of course malice he's just gonna do malashevsky things on a map like this isn't he yeah you expect if malashevsky picks a nomad 3 he's gonna be pretty good on it and refining the chain miss and malashevsky just getting through it already 200k and this lead already looks almost insurmountable malashevsky is just crushing oh this. my god 99 percent <laughs> accuracy making it look so much easier than it actually is Hitting all of the back and forths, this is an absurd score already. Yeah, I mean, it's just already done. This, this map is already signed, sealed, and delivered here for Malice, and he's hitting what? the hardest part of the map. Both oh. players are hitting it. Malice actually misses. Enry hit more of that section than Malice did, but also finds a miss. Probably the hardest section of the map, both players not getting through it, but they both almost did. Unbelievable stuff from both of them, but I mean, Malice's max combo is just far out of the reach, far out of the realm of Enry to even think for a moment he had a chance on this map. Looking like it's gonna be a 600k for Malice Man, almost a 99%. How do you snap these squares at this BPM? I just I, don't I, get it. I don't get it, dude. It's How? literally built different. Oh, okay. Oh, 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 does, does, does find a bit of a chain miss. I think maybe under aiming that first note of that pattern, but all good. Um, Unreal, man.
still almost doubled the score line of Enri. And Enri getting 300k, that's like a pretty expected, pretty normal score you'd see from a top player at this tournament. But Malashevsky just in a in a cloud of his own, high up um, above in the heavens of the Nomad 3 skill set. Yeah, I mean, he is just the god of that skill set, apparently. Just looking down upon his, his feeble opponents as he just gets a 600k in match on that map. That's unbelievable stuff from Malashevsky. And tying it up 2-2 two to two now, as we are going to move into our second set of bans. Both players here are going to be getting one more ban each. So getting what you would think is their two most confident picks out of the way early, as you would in this type of format. And now I'm curious to see what is going to be banned. Are they going to still leave that no mod six up? I, I think you would probably expect them to, considering the no mod, no mod six is the type of map where you would just insta ban it if you were going to. I don't think you would just hold a map like that until the second set of bans. So yeah, it is going to be the hidden three coming out here for Malice, which is surprising. It is actually. surprising. Yeah. Yeah. Especially after the Hard Rock 3 ban from Enry, you absolutely crush the Nomad 3 alt map. Hidden 3 is also an alt map in a similar vein of Nomad 3, likely a little bit easier but more spiky towards the ending. Um, I, you know, Enry obviously really comfortable at Hidden, but a bit of a surprising ban. Maybe just Malashevsky not wanting to gamble on that map. And it is going to be Enry to pick that Nomad 6 you were oh. talking about. <laughs> Banning the Hidden 1 as well, maybe not wanting to play that ridiculous cross-screen horizontal aim section yeah. that that map has. But yeah, this is the reading map. I think this is a map I would say generally would favor to Enry as well. Yeah, I think uh, a Hidden 3 ban, like, I suppose for Malice, like, it probably is one of those maps that can feel a little RNG, especially in match. It just has some really, really hard patterns in it that could possibly feel a little bit RNG, especially with Hidden, so... I can understand the logic there, but... Getting into the snow mod six, I, I do think when it comes to maps like this, we were saying it in the in the pre-match. I think maps like this do favor Enry a little bit, but we'll have to see because I mean early on he has been the only one to find a miss, but very very early days here, and you got to assume both these players have practiced this map a lot. You do not leave a map like this unbanned in an upper bracket bracket semi-final when you know your opponent is capable of playing it. You do not leave it unbanned without practicing it a lot, so keen to see some yeah. possibly good scores here. Especially both players know just how difficult this Ooh, matchup is. Malashevsky going to be finding a massive break, now giving score advantage to Enri as we get into the leaderboard showing. Hopefully he can steal his nerves. You can see these awkward overlaps and rhythms, but Enri holding through. And now the ball in his, in his own court, but still lots of time get through. He needs to hold on to this combo for quite a lot longer to really secure this pick. What am I watching? How is any of this playable? <laughs> it's just unbelievable, man. Henry doing God's work right now. Almost a 500 combo. Malice building up that recovery of his own, though. A bit of aim in here to, to trip you up, and that space Whoa. pattern easily could have caught either player off guard, but both getting through it, getting into the space triple section. Sort of like your exit this earth atmosphere yeah, triples here. It is, it is. Definitely all triples. visible. And there it is, Enry. He's down. And now's a double miss though. Malice finds a miss as well. 96% matching each other's accuracies, but Enry has got about a 30k lead moving into the second half of this map. He needs to hold on to that lead. It is a nice cushion that he is able to fall on, but both players now on equal combos. Enry finds a break here, and Malice holds on, he can recover, but... Oh, and there it is! There's the miss from Enry on that huge space pattern. Malice now not too far away from taking this point back. Okay, Malice has a 100 combo lead. It's 15k to make up, but is any of this hittable? No, it's not! Malice finds a miss, Enry somehow hitting that section. I mean, what can you do, man? Like, this ending is just... What the hell? Enry does find a miss. These patterns just completely unplayable from any stretch of the imagination. Malice though with the 200 combo. Enry building up a small combo of his own. You gotta think at this point in the map, a 250 combo is quite substantial, but it's only about 70 above Enry. A 15k lead still for Enry. Malice, it's in reach, but I think Enry may have to find another miss towards the ending of this map. But we are gonna have to wait and see. It's really tight moving into the end here, Morty. About 10k now. Malice finds the is. break. There it is. Enry with this little bit of combo. He's going to run away with that score, I think, securing his third pick of the map. 
And in a similar vein as the DT2, Henry just on his pick at the ending being a little bit more consistent and that ends up being the difference. Once again, taking that point away from Malashevsky for how difficult this map is. Both of these scores are really good, but Henry, as you mentioned before, on this Nomad 6 skill set, pulls out ahead, getting a really nice third win. Yeah, unbelievable scores here. One extra 100 for Malice and one extra miss for Malice. <laughs> Almost identical <laughs> scores in terms of miss count and 100 count, but just that slight bit of higher max combo for Henry is going to uh, make the difference. Also, one extra 50 from Malice. He just got one of extra in Literally. every category. <laughs> you, you, you can copy my homework to still make it too obvious yeah, on those scores. <laughs> Mal is just replay stealing and just <laughs> altering the max combo a little bit. But yeah, I mean, great stuff there from Henry. Got to have confidence going into a map like that against the number one seed in the tournament. But it works out for him. And now we are going to see the Hard Rock 1. Yeah, a bit of an interesting Hard Rock 1. It's not your normal aim mechanics as you would expect from this slot. Um, has a good amount of aim consistency in it, but lots of flow aim as well. But I do think in this matchup, Malashevsky likely does have the precision advantage. Obviously, one Hard Rock 2 by quarter margin. Hard Rock 3 was banned, but I do think this is going to be more contested than the Hard Rock 2 just because it is a more normal Hard Rock circle size being at 5.5. Yeah, I think this was the, the ulti Hard Rock. I think I misremembered that earlier. I thought it was Hard Rock 3, but yeah, no, this is the Hard Rock ah. 1. It is like kind I, of an ulti sort of consistency. I, th I, think it, I think it's 182. I think it's like a normal BPM, but it is, is flow, it? Aim, flow aim focused, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, okay. It's just like a flow aim map. Gotcha. Never mind. I mean, it kind of does play a little ulti with, I think, some of the yeah. cut patterns in the map as well. Um, but yeah, kind of just your stream consistency with some ulti patterns in here. But both players were getting through the intro quite comfortably. Henry does drop the big combo, though. Malice now does take the lead in terms of the combo and he's going to take the score advantage as well early on. This map is pretty short as well, Vordy. I mean, we're already a third of the way through. Yeah, and both players finding some early breaks, but Halashevsky once again on that slider and Henry now with the lead. And so many awkward spacings here on this 5.5. Henry getting through that oh entire section. God. Oh my goodness. Both players getting through it, but Henry's the one with the bigger combo and Malice finding another miss. This is now looking really good for Henry. I think this is the best case scenario, but does find a break. Oh. Once again, though, with the score lead. This is like the Nomad 6 again. It's going to be really tough for Malashevsky to climb out of that hole. The slider break for Henry. Right when he had the combo, the combos are exactly identical right now, Vordy, but it is a 30 to 40k lead for Henry. Oh, no, these... Ch Henry wiggled them! He's, I don't he's know aimed. if Malice did, but Henry he just aimed. wiggled all of them. He aimed those Why? wiggles. He didn't even have to. You could just aim Why? the same thing. <laughs> Why would you do that? He earned his style <laughs> points. Why would you ever wiggle those in match? But he is winning off it. 350 combo and a 30 to 40k lead still. I think it's enough for the first breakpoint of the match. How did he hold combo there? He just hit a 50 on that. He misaimed the triple and hit it. Henry, fully misaiming that triple, still hitting it, manages to take the first breakpoint of the go. match after wiggling those patterns when he didn't need to whatsoever. <laughs> I I, 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 I wasn't to. I wasn't looking at Malice aiming those patterns. I don't know if he wiggled those as well, but mad yeah. respect to wiggle those patterns and hold a combo. Uh, and yeah, huge breakpoint. Henry's now up 4-2 against Malashevsky, going into his next pick, a huge lead, two wins away or two maps away from winning this whole thing. Didn't expect I to see a, a breakpoint this early. Man, and again, just... 15 100s to the 14 100s, both with a 487 max combo. The accuracy is 0.2% difference. I mean, you couldn't write a script that's much closer than this at this point. <laughs> now now it's up to Malice to get two in a row and make it a 4 4. And I mean, if anyone's going to do it, it's going to be someone like Malashevsky to immediately fire back with a break point of his own because I'm not too sure what Henry is going to opt to pick here, if I'm honest. And I can't imagine Malice is finds himself in these situations too often, being down 2-4 in a semi-finals matchup. Um, but Henry now has the chance to really seal this advantage. What does he go for here? I think at this point, any pick from both players is going to be contested. Ooh. He does go for the hidden 2, the low AR hidden, 
levitating, an absolute banger of map, but yeah, I think it's going to be similar to Nomad 6. Both of these players can play low AR, um, a pretty aim-focused low AR map, something that Malice is going to be pretty solid on, but with how Enry's been going, the momentum is in his favor. It's going to be a huge way to secure that 5-2. Yeah, this this AR8 is just aim, aim, and a lot more aim, and it's decently long as well. <clears throat> I think somewhere around that three plus minute mark of just a lot of AR8 aim. So a lot of consistency coming in here on this AR8 skill set. We'll have to see who's more comfortable snapping on this low AR at this difficulty range. I think uh, both players, of course, going to handle it very well, but. Just uh, curious to see if you can hold onto the nerves a little bit more. It's always it's always very easy to just slip up a little bit on an AR8 in match and just slightly misjudge a note or anything of the sort, especially when it's like an aim-styled map like this. Yeah, I mean, a momentary, just a minuscule lapse of focus and you are gone on a map like this. There's really no free combo in a low AR8 because you always have to be locked in. Yeah, absolutely. Especially when, like, maps like this are just considered very slow for, like, players like this, you know? Especially that ARA, you just, a lapse of, of focus, as you said. It's all it can take to just slightly misread something. And, uh, just, just find that random miss if you lose a little bit of focus, but... We'll see, early on, no one finding any struggles. No one having any struggles adjusting to this ARA. You see some of these linear snaps, pretty brutal in this map, but both players handling them like legends right now. No this one to find these clip ups. Yeah, this is just very, very hard to actually hit. Same thing with the Hard Rock 2. It might not look hard, but I dare you to play this map and try and hit those this, linears, man. It's so awkward. It's like if you were drifting in a Lambo on ice. It's just like, try to control, <laughs> try to control that on these, on these patterns. Yeah. The flow is absolutely brutal, but both players just looking so comfortable, and I can't imagine these combos are going to hold for too long. You would think so. But both players still do not seem to care as they are hitting everything in this song, in this banger. And here we go, moving into the next key. Oh, man, they're still just going crazy on this. Oh, no, this... No oh, adventure. no. This pattern looks so hard. It, it, somebody's missing here. We're, we're on pausing. Missing. Somebody's missed here for sure. There's no way. This pattern looks unreal hard that they've paused on. Oh, okay. please, Banto. Please, please. continue. <laughs> no. No, no. Get back, dude. Get back. Okay. Oh, Henry hit it. Henry, Henry hit it. Oh, no. Does Malice hit it? Malice's Malice. game crashed. Malice's no. game crashed. Oh, you're oh. kidding. And I think... I think according to the rule set, it's too late, right? Uh, so I think Enry's just going to win by default because he has a higher score than Malice did at the time of Crash. Oh, that is absolutely tragic. I, I think you're most likely right. I think we I'm saw this certain, happen yeah. uh, in the last match Malice played. Enry finding a break. We obviously would have no idea what score Malice would be on. We can only Assuming... conjecture. Assuming Malice actually crashed and didn't just DC, I, I think he did actually crash. Because if he DC'd, there's possibly like a solo score, but I think he's actually, his game's actually fully crashed. I, I believe so. And in that case, it would just be locked at 342k, which obviously would lose. Henry obviously playing this really well. There's, you know, it's, it's unknown whether or not he would have, Malice would have beaten him. But yeah, really unfortunate to see that happen, especially in a match this close. And in a situation where Malice really needs that breakpoint. Yeah, we're going to have to wait and see just to get it fully confirmed that that is what's going to be the case. But yeah, I mean, it was Enry also missing, like, not that long after the crash, which, yeah, you got to wonder. It could have been a possibility for Malice. It absolutely would have been a possibility for Malice. But Enry's still closing it out with a pretty solid score. Looks like it's about going to be about 600k into the ending of the map. Oh man, that's not that's not what you want to happen in a no. match like this. When's the last time Malice has been down like points in a 1v1 tourney in anything like other than a grand final, man? And and he crashes when it happens. He Especially crashes. in a situation where he's looking so comfortable, has the act lead. Um 
the breakpoint could have been there potentially. We we don't know. It is a world where Malice misses on that pattern that was paused on, and it goes to Henry anyway. We don't know, but that it, I believe that is just going to be Henry winning that point. Still playing very very well, getting 600k. Um, really good score, but we could only we could only wonder if Nas would have got on that. And now Malashevsky back on the wall on break point in a relatively unfortunate way, but we'll see what he has up his sleeve for the rest of this match. Can he have the god mental and just come back from this and take it a tiebreaker anyway? Yeah. I mean, you've got two picks in your pocket. You've only got to take one break point off Henry so, uh, for the rest of this match here and just take your two picks. So it's just up to what he wants to go for. I mean, it is doable. It's Malashevsky, man. It's a very, very unfortunate fate for that to happen right there. But what do you go here? What can make it a three to five? Thinking maybe something like a Nomad 4 could be a really solid pick for Malice, but I don't really know where else you go at this point. You could go for some aim, possibly the Nomad 1. We'll see what he's going to opt for. We, we love picking Nomad 1 on match point, but uh, <laughs> yeah. maybe, maybe on his after next pick. But yeah, I do definitely expect Nomad 4 does go for DT3. Ooh. Interesting. See, th this is another one of those contested maps. It's almost a map I would have expected Henry to maybe go for but Malashevsky is really good at these aim control double time maps where you have to have really fast aim control I think you have to snap at like over 200 bpm on some of these wiggles it is pretty absurd um so definitely a really good map for Malashevsky yeah I think uh I mean Malice has always been historically really really good at like 10.3 uh like reading like high AR so a map like this, especially like an ulti type map, I definitely, uh, I think I favor him on it going into this one, but, you know, Enri's also really, really good at it. Uh, <laughs> I'm praying uh, Malice didn't just crash again. I mean, if he did, it doesn't it, matter, because it, it, it will just restart. It, it, if he did, it would replay, or it would abort, because uh, that yeah. was instantly. I'm, I'm yeah, praying for Malachevsky's computer at this point. He crashed again, apparently. Oh, no. He, cr he did crash again, but this time it was at the very start, thankfully, so it's not going to matter. We are going to get to retry. Unfortunately, just because how the rule set works, I think it's like 30 seconds into the map. If you, uh, if you crash, there's just no replay. Um, I'm, I'm also worried that if another crash happens halfway again, it's just it's going to be a similar thing to Hidden 2. Really hope that doesn't happen. I'm, I'm praying for Malashevsky's CPU. Whatever is causing the issue, Bench, I don't know. I'm assuming it might just be his PC right now. I don't really know. But we will get this DT3 played and just pray that we have no more crashes. Hopefully he should just be coming back very, very soon here. I mean, man, this is not what you need in Malice's like situation right now. I mean, like Mental's probably already not doing great. You've just crashed and lost a hidden two from crashing, like your PC crashing, or oh, not your PC crashing, your game crashing. Yeah. But here we go, into the D3. All we can do is pray that our PC will be fine. <laughs> give, give Malice's computer your energy. Get into this double time three. Relatively techy aim control double time. I mean, man, this would be kind of history, honestly, if Henry was to defeat Malice in, like, a non-grand final. I mean, like, this is kind of unreal to even see Henry up, you know, 5-2 right now. Even even with that crash, like, the fact that Henry had a 4-2 lead in this match is pretty unreal. But he did find a miss there that I did miss. Uh, Malice will be taking the lead early on, especially with a huge ACK lead, 1.5%. So, pretty long map, though. Yeah, plenty of time. Lots of these space doubles that could trip you up at any point. And we though, finding a solid recovery from that break. Not going to be too far behind now if Malice misses as well. Lots of these reverses as well. You mess up that timing and how fast you have to move. But both of these players are so good at sliders, especially Malachevsky. Maybe the best slider player in the game. So likely it will not find too many issues there. 
This is incredibly impressive stuff from both of these players right now, man. Both S ranking, a 1% athlete for Malice and about a 400 combo lead. So huge advantage approaching that second half point in the map. Malice gonna need to hold on for about another 30, maybe, maybe, maybe another minute. He can hold on just for a bit more. Oh, He's gonna man. secure a pretty comfortable cushion, but Henry is right there with the big recovery combo, so there is still room for Henry. Malice cannot afford to break soon. He does need to hold for a bit longer here. These patterns are brutal, but they're both just getting through it, man. Like, what other matchup are both of them holding a 1,000 combo, 1,000 plus combo at this point? Henry, though, going to find the break, and now that's pretty much this point yeah. in the bag for Malashevsky. 1.5k combo, finding no mental problems after that unfortunate crash, just taking it in stride, now looking to win this point. Does find the break, but with 200k score in the lead, Henry, oh not too big of a combo lead. How is this playable, yeah. man? This just looks unbelievably difficult. Those wiggles, man. Oh my god, Malice hitting that, Henry finding a break on it. Still the S rank from Malashevsky. Quarter of the map remaining. He's done enough at this point. I think that's gonna be the map all sealed up. Just uh, the question is how much score you can get. 700k is possible here. But 444 BPM, that's like if you had to snap the Freedom Dive BPM in this map. That, <laughs> that's that's essentially what those wiggles are. You're snapping 222 <laughs> yeah. on wiggles. Like that is ridiculous. That's unreal perspective to think of it that way. And those buzz sliders, not trolling anyone this time around. A little bit of the map remaining, about an eighth. I mean, really, really, really good performance from Malashevsky on this DT3, and that's what he needs, man. Two more to go to bring things to a tiebreaker. Both players getting through this ending some way, somehow, hitting every pattern in the ending of this map. I think Enry might be on like a one or two miss, and Malashevsky's on an S rank, which is just an unreal performance from both of these players on this DT3. Incredible stuff in this ending, both just shredding the map. What the hell am I watching? Man. Both hitting that whole ending. Unreal scores, man. Yeah, we, we wanted to see this game being played at a high level, and this is what we've been getting so far. Not a single bad performance yet, and a nice S rank from Malachevsky. I think over 700k. As we go into Enri's last pick, and it is do or die for Malice. Enri has opportunity. He hasn't lost a pick yet. Hidden 2 was obviously the most contested, um, but going into this next one, can he find a way to win another pick and leave this match winning 6-3, or does Malice pull a huge comeback? I, I really don't know if what you pick here if you're Enri. I mean, this is hard. No matter what you pick, it's going to be a bit of a coin flip. But in terms of options, okay, yeah, you've got that no mod 4. And he is going to go for the no mod 4, which I think Malashevsky possibly leaving it open, gambling on the fact that Enry at some point was going to pick the map, I, I think is a possibility here. Obviously, it wasn't like something strong enough for Malashevsky to be like, yeah, I want to early pick this, but it's just something that either of these players can pick. So Malashevsky is just going for something he feels confident on instead that DT3, probably knowing Enry is going to eventually pick into this no mod 4 at some point in the map. Uh, in the match, because I, mean, I, I don't think he was picking that no mod one. I mean, maybe the no mod two. I, I would think honestly, for Enri, you go like no mod one, no mod two. I mean, everything is a bit of a coin flip, but no mod four against Malice. I mean, Enri could prove us wrong yeah. here, but that that seems just like I, I just can't. I, I think on the like on tourney tech maps like this, there's a bunch of like types of tech maps, right? But in this kind of tech, it's just Malice has proven to be so unbelievably consistent. Um, we know Enri's really good at tech as well. He's one of the best tech players in the world, but against Malashevsky, I think he have a better time winning something with Nomad 2, Nomad 1, but he did pick it, which means he likely is feeling pretty good. And uh, we'll yeah. see how Malice fares as well. It's just hard at this point in the match. You've barely got any picks left in the pool. What do you go for? You probably just pick something you feel good on, and Enri probably feels good on it. Probably not really just considering Malice's like skill cap on tech. Just thinking, I feel good on this Nomad 4, I'm going to pick it at this point in the match entirely a possibility when you've got almost no picks left but we'll we'll have to see yesterday i was saying that i would be blown away if i saw anyone 99 this map 
I just can't see a world where it's possible that anyone 99%s this, but I would love to see it. Because if it's gonna happen, it's gonna be in this match, man. If it's gonna happen, it's likely gonna be Malice, <laughs> because look at this SS he's holding through all of these sliders, does find a slider and drop. Probably a good thing, honestly. You do not want to be holding on an SS. That is just too much for your nerves. Oh, oh dude. Oh my god. How are they not dropping hundreds on like a lot of these slider ends? I, it's unreal. I don't know. There's a one third that they both SS that. Getting through the cuts. Okay, man. Okay, one thing to note though is that towards, I think around the second half of this map, a little bit after, like the sliders are going to get way harder to, you know, get the slider ends on. And I think we will start seeing some act tanking. But so far, this is just incredibly impressive. Malice with about a 1% Ackley. There goes Enry, drops the combo right before the halfway mark. Malashevsky just doing Malashevsky things on oh, the Nomad Enry, stop it. Stop your dancing. I think maybe a little bit tilted at his miss. I'm not too sure. I didn't quite see it, but there's still time. But I mean, Malashevsky has to miss soon. And the map is about to pick up a little bit. It's going to have a little bit of a spike here, as I was mentioning. Do as we now have... build up to it. There it is. Malice on that 99, right now at least, will likely find some 100s getting through that cut stream. Here we go. <laughs> no, this is this is absurd. Now 300ing these sliders is impossible. I mean, it how? Like, see, Malice just, of course, sacrificing all his accuracy to hit these sliders. And this is exactly why I thought 99ing this map was impossible on, on score VT. I mean, you're just never doing it. Like, what is this? Malice sacrificing all his accuracy, both players all their accuracy is gone just to hit that section. But it's what you got to do to hold onto the combo, man. And it's exactly what Malashevsky needed to get some headway back into this match, looking to make it 4-5 as he approaches the ending of this map, still with an FC intact. It's all eyes on Malashevsky. He's even an FC the Snowmod 4, which would be an absolutely ludicrous play as he continues to shred every single pattern in this map, man. Malashevsky is just a demon. Henry finds a break, but Malashevsky just keeps going. What the hell is this performance, man? I, I am just in awe. I don't even know what to say anymore. This is just, this is just absurd. Henry finding another drop and Malice is just on another level right now. I, can he, can he do it? He needs to hold on for a little bit longer. That's like an off-screen slider. Nah. This is just unbelievable performance from Malashevsky. An absolutely oh, mesmerizing no. play. He misses oh, the slider kidding, break man. in the last 30 combo. Malashevsky <laughs> still pull home, pulls home the S rank on what is going to be the best score of, of the weekend on that match. I am, I am positive in that. But that is still unbelievable. Barely misses the FC at the ending and man what can you and, do if you're Henry there and honestly I, I think I think that lesson is just don't pick number four against Malashevsky man just don't yeah. do it <laughs> just don't do it just don't, don't do it man that is he he means business when he plays that skill set dude I don't think I've ever seen Malice underperform in a nomad four unironically like that is <laughs> I can't. I am. I'm looking into the database of my brain, and I'm. I'm just seeing S ranks. I'm just seeing ridiculous scores. I don't see a single flop, and that streak continues as Malice goes in for the last pick of the match, looking to tie it up five five going into tiebreaker. And at this point, there's not much in the pool left. He goes for no more two. I, it, fe it feels like these points are flipped. Uh, these picks are flipped. I mean, I mean, at this point, I don't really. There's not many maps left to pick, really, right? It, it's no mod one and no mod two. I think that's it. I th I think I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure Nomad One and Nomad it's... Two are the only two maps left in the pool, and Malice actually going to be opting for the Nomad Two over the raw aim, which actually kind of surprises me. I think Malashevsky strikes me as the type of player who would probably uh, feel a bit, probably go for like something like a consistency Nomad One over this. But I mean, hey, who, who am I to to tell him what he can and can't pick? I mean, at this point, he is going off, and he's still just solidified as one of the best players in the world, man. It's, unbelievable but the snow mod 2 getting into it very very aimy stream map both players going to be very capable on a map like this and i would not doubt enry on something like this for a moment definitely a possibility that enry can just close this match out early for sure Ooh. look at that discord, discord slider. slider don't even don't even don't even try to aim that man that don't is check your pings that is a full <laughs> full errand 
Um, yeah, I do think this is a style of Nomad 2 that's going to fit Malashevsky's comfort, the C-Mob type of Nomad 2, lots of high spaced, shorter streams. There's one very big stream in this map, but not really as stamina focused as some other Nova 2s, but Henry right now, he's got that act lead. And yeah. that's pretty scary because this map is really tough, but these players could FC it. There's a world where that happens. Absolutely. Act lead though. Yeah, over a 1% lead, as you said, for Henry. Moving towards the second half of this map. It's do or die here for Malashevsky. He needs to take this point if he wants to bring it to a tiebreaker against Henry in the winner bracket in the semi-finals. Discord slider again. Don't get you baited. Both players FCing into the second half of this map, man, hitting all these tech sections. There's, there's just no way this comes down to an act battle. I, I just refuse to believe it. Somebody has to break. Someone has to miss those space triples. Malashevsky is the one to break. Henry holding on to the FC. A quarter of the map remaining. He's still going. He's going to have to miss here soon if you want a tiebreaker because Malashevsky has no combo to speak of. Henry's still just going, tearing this up. Over 140k lead. He finds a chain miss. 100k lead for Henry. A bit more. I don't know if there's time here for Malashevsky. We're going to have to see a collapse from Henry. We're going to need another chain miss for him to lose some score here. Otherwise, I just don't think there's any time. I, I think you're right. There's just not enough time here. As a sliver of the map is left to play out, I believe that's going to be it. It's going to be Enry beating Malashevsky wow. in a 1v1, 6 to 4, in phenomenal fashion with a great 700k on that Noma 2. S that rank from Malice. Unbelievable. I mean, Malashevsky takes the S rank, Enry with the four misses, but it didn't matter. He got those four misses, I think, on like the same pattern, so. Max combo was still there. I mean, just takes it uh, by a, a small margin on the Nomad 2. 6 4 to Henry after a heartbreaking. I mean, I don't want to obviously blame this whole match on the DC from Malashevsky and that hidden 2, but that's definitely obviously heartbreaking if you're Malashevsky. Henry still deserving, I think, of a win here. He played incredibly. Sure, Both sure. players yeah. played out of their mind, man, but. You gotta stop and think, you know, would we have seen a tiebreaker here, maybe, if that hidden two wasn't a DC? We'll never really know. <laughs> but, we we won't know, yeah. but what we do know is the most cooked losers bracket matchup we're ever gonna <laughs> see. It's gonna be Malashevsky versus Emrek in the <laughs> first finals losers bracket matchup round. So one of those players is gone in that match. I I I can't believe it, but that is how the bracket has come to being. Yeah, one of one of either Emrek or Malashevsky is not making top four, if I'm correct, in this uh, tournament. I which think is, so. Yeah, I yeah, think one of them which is gonna is end top six. Ludicrous to think about that that is a possibility, but I mean Henry moving up to the to the finals, the winner bracket finals, taking down the king. Malashevsky heading down to the lower bracket is the last thing you expected. I think for everyone here showing up to watch this match today. But Henry, he was here to play, man. This is why I was excited for this match. I knew he was looking really good and I knew this was going to be a close match. So I'm just happy for him, man. Taking home a big, big win. I'm sure he's like ecstatic with that. Well, close one it was. And we're about to get into another match, I believe in two minutes right after uh, this wraps up. We're going to get worst HR player up against MCY4, the other side of the winner's semifinals bracket. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a banger as well. Yeah, so that's going to do it for uh, myself and Vordy. Make sure to check out the Corsais manga, exclamation mark manga in chat to check that one out. And uh, yeah. Vordy? And uh, you can use exclamation mark Momokai to get 10% off their keypads using code Corsais. But I believe that is going to be it from us. Phenomenal match. Uh, glad to cast this one alongside you, Mavs. And yeah, I'll see you in like a minute or two for MCY4 versus HR. Yeah, thanks all.